Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you the Sapphire HD 4770 Radeon video card. Now this one here is a mainstream video card that is at a lower price point. So if you're looking to buy a video card, this one comes at 750 megahertz, the core clock, 800 megahertz memory, that's 3.2 gigahertz total effectively. It has GDDR5 though, instead of GDDR3 memory. So this one's faster. And of course, you can have this in Crossfire. You can have it two cards if you want. HDMI is supported. Game physics is supported. 10.1 DirectX and shader model 4.1 supported. Best thing about it is that it's 40 nanometer. So it's going to use less energy. It's going to dissipate less heat. So when we overclock this, we won't have to worry about, okay, how much energy is this going to use? Well, it's about an 80 watt um, energy consuming uh, card as opposed to other cards that use much more energy. Now when we compare this against the 4670, hands down it's going to beat it. Okay, So there's no, no uh, point comparing it to the 4670. It almost doubles it in the scores and benchmarks and everything. It comes close and equal to the 4850 and we're going to compare it today to the 4870 because it's half the price basically of a 4870. So you might as well compare it and see which one you want to get. You want to get this one or 4870. Now it's a dual slot card. Keep that in mind. So you're going to need to uh, occupy two spaces on your uh, on your slots there. You can see here the nice looking uh, cooler that it comes. And it has a nice see-through fan, 9 blade on it, 80 millimeter. It's not an LED fan though. And it comes with a nice thick copper heat sink underneath and on the side another plate which is the heat sink for the memory modules there it uses a six pin PCI Express uh, power connector only so you can tell right there off the bat that it's going to use less energy doesn't require that much and of course there are the uh, connectors for your crossfire on the other side nothing special it's a standard type of board nothing really fancy here to look at just show it to you for two seconds there and um, Again, on that cooler, if we were to take it out, it's basically a copper heat sink which touches the GPU just enough to make contact to cool it off and then it blows the air down towards the chipset to cool that off as the fan spins, of course. So there you go. That's the card in a nutshell. Now when you go to install this, it's nothing special, just like with any other type of video card. It's straightforward, right? Just make sure you have the power connectors, everything disconnected, that you're grounded, you touch the case and install it in the PCI Express 2.0 X16 slot that you've got on your motherboard and of course find the appropriate power connector, 6 pin PCI Express and connect it there and then of course attach the screw there to the card to fasten it to the case. Now this is the system that I'm going to test it against. I'm also going to install separately later a 4870 to benchmark it against and um, this is a pretty good system so that we can get some decent results. Now I'm going to overclock it. I've done the uh, automated overclocking. You can see here that it's using the RV740 chipset. There's the, uh, the 2.0 PCI Express support. You can see here the shader uh, support. You can see the bandwidth. It's 128 bit instead of 256. And of course it comes with 512 megs of RAM that I mentioned. Now, now I overclocked this already from the defaults a little bit. Now let me tell you that the default idle temperature is roughly about 37 degrees Celsius and on max full load it's about 61 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now how did I overclock it? I just let the ATI overdrive do its thing. So I went into the ATI Catalyst drivers after installing it. I ran the auto tune and let it do its thing and it installed itself and then I um, let it overclock to 820 megahertz for the core and 840 for the memory. Now, running the benchmarks here, I've got some new games that I wanted to try this against, starting with the Tom Clancy Hawks and running all the games at 680 times 1050 for AA. And you can see the results here, 109 max frames per second, 46 average frames per second, pretty decent compared to the 4870. Of course, the 4870 is going to be higher, but again, it is double the price. So do you really want to pay almost double the money for a card which gives you decent results and here it is right here's what you're getting for the price point now let's look at a different game because I didn't uh, just do benchmarks on the Tom Clancy of course I tried a different game and this time I, I uh, got the uh, grid racing so on grid racing this one here is pretty cool I gotta say um, I also ran it on 680 50, uh, by 1050 max and I got 79 
uh, frames per second max 66 average frames per second pretty decent for for what you're getting again and uh, of course I'm maxing out all the options when I do this test on the grid racing okay so just keep that in mind another game that I also wanted to try that uh, is different from my previous benchmarks is Fallout 3 so I tried Fallout 3 and on that one again at 1680 1050 I uh, got 64 frames max 59 average again very decent results here for what you're getting and um, I had no problems no issues and of course if you run this at lower resolutions and you disable anti-aliasing and all that you're gonna get higher frames right and that's what I had to do on crisis warhead I couldn't run crisis on um, enthusiast level because it's just too high so I ran it at a gamer level and I got very decent results 30 frames per second max for example on crisis so on Call of Duty for an older game I got decent results 118 max 87 average frames per second pretty good maxed out of course and here are the 3d vantage scores here's the GPU score that you get compared to the 4870 if you're wondering just so you can compare there you go and um, well what does it come with the box well overall I mean it comes with a complete kit obviously you're gonna get the manual right you need the instructions how to install it so forth so there you go there's the manual you get the driver CD too obviously but I always recommend to get the latest catalyst drivers which today is 9.5 the DVD suite which allows you to create and author DVDs that's great and of course you want to play them back with the power DVD uh, utility the program here that's pretty nice comes included and also you get the adapter so here is the DVI to HDMI output so if you've got a blu-ray player on your PC and you want to output it to uh, a nice big screen that has HDMI there you go if you have an older screen a CRT well there you go DVI to VGA output so it comes included no problem and of course you're gonna get the component out so your S video to uh, RGB there's your three colors and you can have high definition on uh, another type of device if uh, you require that and of course the bridge connector the crossfire bridge connector if you wanted to uh, get two of these cards and have them back to back I didn't have two so I couldn't test that but there you go and uh, I also have here the four pin to six pin the Molex to PCI Express for those of you who might need that because of your power supply for example so there you go complete comes with everything you need and you can get started with that and I definitely recommend this again half the price almost of the 4870 you can't go wrong right for what you're getting definitely faster than the 4670 no point even talking about that so I like to thank Sapphire for providing it and I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching